In this video, we will show various detailing and documentation features provided by DDS CAT. Before we start, we have already opened the ground floor of the electrical, ventilation and sanitary models. They are available in the Explorer on the left. We will begin showing the part text function, which is an intelligent text element that can be attached to objects. In this case, we will demonstrate the use of part text on the fluorescent lamps. To do so, double click on one of the text elements of a fluorescent lamp. In this dialog, we can press copy to create a new template and give it a unique name. Once that is done, we can press OK. Next, press the configure button. In this table, we see all the available variables that can be displayed for a fluorescent lamp. An X in front of a label indicates that it is active. By double clicking on a label, we can activate it in the part text. Let's do this for voltage, voltage loss, cable length to board and current. Whilst having the label current selected, change the decimal parameter to 2. To finish the configuration, press OK. Here we can see a preview of the part text template that we've just configured. In addition, we can activate a border frame and reference line for the part text. To do so, check the checkbox for border and select the option reference line with circle. Press OK to confirm all settings. To reposition the part text, move the cursor to the part text node and press right mouse button. In the context menu, we can select the move option. Move the cursor to the new position and fix the part text with left mouse click. Whilst having the part text still selected, right click again to open the context menu. Select the option copy part text properties. Now move the cursor to the other part text and left click to apply the new settings. The function smart snaps must be active in order to use this function. Press escape to close the function. In preparation of creating a plot layout, we will first create a part model. A part model is a cutout of the actual model to which we can add details that will not be displayed in the original model. The part model function is found in the toolbar. In the dialog, press the new part model button. Enter a descriptive name to the part model and click OK. The part model is defined with a rectangle. Define the rectangle window in such a way that the room 106 is completely inside. In the dialog we see a preview of the part model. Click close and escape to close the part model function. As we can see the part model is automatically added to the explorer. Double click it to open it. First we will hide the wall number layer using the layer display function. Activate the layer function, move the cursor over the wall numbers and press left mouse button to hide the layer. Press escape to close the function. Now we will insert some dimensioning on the part model. The dimension function is found in the toolbar. Let's add dimensioning lines between the fluorescent lamp and the structural wall. Move the cursor to the center point of the fluorescent lamp and left click to start defining the dimension line. Move the cursor to the wall corner and press left mouse button. Next, press enter and move the cursor to a position where you would like to fix the dimension line. Now press escape once so that the dimension line remains selected and open the context menu with a right mouse click. Select the option create from same positions. Move the cursor to the right to create a vertical dimension line and left click to fix its position. Again, with the dimension line selected, open the context menu. This time select the option Insert Note. Move the cursor to the center of the lamp below and press left mouse button. Next, select the wall corner below with another left click. Press Escape to close the function. To conclude, with the dimension line selected, open the context menu once more. This time select the option Create from Extend. Move the cursor to the position of the extended dimension line and fix it with a left mouse click. Let's switch to the sanitary model to show the cross section function. The function is found in the toolbar. In the dialog, press the new section button. First, position the cursor and left click to start defining the section. Move the cursor to define the width of the section and left click to confirm. 
Next, move the cursor perpendicular to the section line to define its depth and again left click to confirm. With the section selected, open the context menu and select the properties option. In the section tab, we can change the section symbol and its skill. At the drop down list, select the building section arrow filled. Click on the symbol skill arrow down once to lower the skill to 0.5. Click OK to confirm and escape to deselect the section. Once the section is defined, it is automatically added to the explorer. Double click the section to open it. In the section view we see the potable water and drainage systems. Let's hide the drainage system so that it will not be displayed when we insert this section into a plot layout. To do so, open the layer display and freeze the domestic wastewater layer. Now we will add some detailing to the potable water system starting with dimension lines. Activate the dimension function and start at the bottom of the water heater with a left click. Next, click at the top corner of the water heater, as well as the hot water bend and the cold water bend above it. Now press enter and move the cursor to the left. With a left click we can fix the position of the dimension line. Press escape to close the function. Let's rotate the dimension values and set them to millimeters. To do so, double click the dimension line. In the dialog, click on the Rotate Text checkbox. At this drop down list, we can change the units of the dimension line, in this case to millimeters. Click OK to confirm and escape to deselect the dimension line. The part text function can also be used in sections. Different from the model, in which we first select the object, here we start by activating the part text function first. And in this case, click OK. We have predefined the pipe segment part text to display only the pipe size. Move the cursor to the pipe segment and left click to insert the part text. Press escape to close the function. Now double click this part text element. Since this part text is located near multiple pipe segments, we activate a border and select first line underlined from the drop down list. In addition, activate a reference line with a circle and solid fill. Then click OK to confirm. Let's now switch to the ventilation model to show how to generate a parts list. The parts list function can be found in the toolbar. A parts list shows all products that are currently visible in the model. In the dialog, we see a preview of the parts list. The parts list can be generated as a report using one of the available report templates. By pressing the Reports button, DDSCAD opens the report generator. Next, click on the parts list filter. In the bottom left, we see different part list options. First, we select the Parts List checkbox and uncheck the cover page. This Parts List report sorts all products by category. Next, we select the Parts List per room and deselect the Parts List checkbox. As you can see, this report shows the products per room. The reports can be printed as PDF files or exported to Word and Excel. Let's now go to the electrical and sanitary models. Select the import and model manager in the toolbar. Click on the tab Ghost Story Discipline and select all disciplines from the drop down list. And turn on the electrical and sanitary models on the ground floor. Press OK to apply. Until now, we made several preparations to generate a plot layout for the MAP system. So let's create a plot layout inside the ventilation model. To do so, select the plot layout wizard in the toolbar. Enter a name for the plot and click OK. The plot layout wizard opens the sheet dialog. 
open the product database to select a different sheet size. In this case, we select an A1 sheet. Click OK twice to proceed. Next, we can select an appropriate title field. In this case, we take the default one and press OK. In the following dialog, we have access to all models that have been created in this project. The ground floor ventilation model is selected. We will set the skill to 1 to 50. Press the insert button and position the model in the top left corner of the sheet. Click on the plus sign in front of the ground floor of the electrical discipline. Select the part model lighting 106. Since we will use the skill 1 to 50, we can click insert and position the model in the bottom left corner of the sheet. At last, click on the plus sign in front of the ground floor of the sanitary discipline. Select the section AA. Change the skill to 1 to 20. Click insert and position the section next to the part model. In this last step of the wizard, you can enter information that will be automatically used in the plot's title field. After you have filled it in, click OK. Here you can see the title field with the model information. Let's also insert a render image to the plot. Go to Insert menu, External Resource and click on Image File as XREP. We have prepared this render image as we learned in the Getting Started render video. Select the render image and click OK. In the dialog, check the Position Dynamically checkbox. Select the next tab to scale the image. In this case, we've multiplied the global scale of the image with factor 35. Position the image next to the complete model and press Escape. Free text can always be added, for example to describe this image on the plot. To do so, click on the text function in the toolbar. We have set the text height to 5 and typed the text render image map model. We position the text dynamically above the render image. Press escape to close the function. Headers of the inserted models can also be automatically shown. To do so, we will select all the models. Right click to open the context menu and select the properties option. Now select the show header text checkbox and press OK to apply. As we can see, DDSCAD inserts the model descriptions on top of each of the inserts. This text can be edited and repositioned if necessary. Finally, we can export the plot to PDF by clicking on the PDF printer in the toolbar. You must select the same sheet size in the printer tab. This way we can use the drawing skill as defined in the model. To finalize, press print to generate the PDF. Here we see the end result as a PDF with 1200 dpi.